All right, everybody. Uh, I got another project. I saw my side by side in here. He should be here tomorrow to pick it up. My concrete guy's truck's still here. I think they're waiting. It, we've had a winter storm, so they're, I'm guessing, just leaving it here so they don't have to come get it. It's not hurting sitting on, on my property. I have like five acres out here, so uh, it's not a big deal. So I've got those two projects, and I just picked up another one today. I got this guy. Uh, this is one of the other guys we race with. Uh, I actually originally built the cage in this thing uh, quite a few years ago. Yeah, pretty much when we first moved out here. It was probably like four or five years ago I built this cage. There was a lot more to this Bronco when I built this cage. Uh, there used to be a floor in the back here. He's cut all this away. He's trying to lighten this thing up to make it go a little faster. Um, it was pretty rusty when he got it. And I put the cage in it um, where these back, your main, your B pillar. Normally I tie them in this corner, but you can see it was a rust hole right through there. Like there was nothing there. Um, so I moved them to here. I actually bent this cage back to get to some good sheet metal on the body. Uh, then it's tied down <clears throat> to the rear leaf spring mount with another piece of uh, essentially pipe. Um, I, I'd say pipe, and I know everyone's kind of like, oh my gosh, pipe. Dude, I, I will tell you what, we don't go fast enough to like where this stuff is going to give. Um, I have seen... I have seen a move. I've rolled mine twice, and mine is Schedule 40 pipe, uh, inch and a quarter Schedule 40 pipe. I haven't had a single bar move on mine. Um, this one's tied in two, four, six spots. So it's six point cage. Um, all the seats, you know how I am about my seats. All the seats are mounted to the roll cage. So even if the body collapses, this thing's still super safe. He's sitting inside a cocoon. I'd open these doors and show you, but he's welded the door shut. Uh, I was just thinking about like, kind of a little dangerous almost, but you can see his seats are mounted there and on this piece of tube back here. Um, yeah, it's got double bars in the middle uh, coming down to his uh, dash bar. And then it has, I ran through these holes all the way back to the frame and then I tied his coils to his engine cage essentially. It used to mount here, he's put a different motor in here and then he's moved this bar. This bar actually used to sit here. Uh, he's added a lot of stuff, he's put this stuff on it. Uh, that's not really my work. Um, just mainly the main part of the cage uh, is what I did for him. Uh, I built this front bumper too. He used to have a grill in this and he's taken a lot of it off just trying to make it lighter so it goes faster. Uh, he's brought back here. He's got a lot of stuff he wants me to work on. This is the main thing. Uh, he just put these coils in. He put these dual shocks in the front. They were out testing yesterday. Our local Jeep club kind of had a test and tune day. We didn't even know about it. It was on a different page. We didn't know about it. I, I don't know if we would have win anyways because we always test and tune on our property. That's why we have property. Uh, it was like 40 bucks to do it. I, I don't know. I, I might, I would have went out and watched him do it. I, I just like hanging out with everybody. Um, but we didn't go, we didn't know about it. Um, but what he's having, his problem is, I don't know if you can see these coils, see how they're kind of like curved. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know a whole lot about Broncos, but I think what he's got going on, he's got too much lift <clears throat> and his, he hasn't lengthened these arms. I think it's throwing off the geometry of the suspension on this thing. So these coils aren't sitting perfectly straight up and down. So when he unloads his suspension and it goes out, these, this coil mainly on this side, I don't know if this is factory Ford stuff. If people know, let me know, because I don't 100% know. Look at the gap underneath this little bracket that's supposed to be holding that coil on there. Like on a Jeep on the bottom, it has this same kind of bracket and that sucker is tight against there. The top part of the coil on a Jeep has a bump stop in the middle of the coil with a piece of tube in it. So even when you unload it, it can bounce around in there, but it can't come out. So he jumped this thing and this coil went whoop, that way, totally ejected the coil on the top. But we're gonna put a block right here, like a three quarter inch block. I'm gonna roll it on my metal roll to kind of match this. I'm going to weld it to there, hopefully keep that coil 
in the pocket that should be there, I would think. I mean, a Jeep has a pocket. I don't know. I'm not a Ford guy. I'm going to try to read that. I'm going to probably pull that off there. I'm going to beat it up that way. I'm going to bend this thing so that it's tight against there. So when I put that bolt in that it's somewhat holding that thing, I, I don't know. That looks like a crappy design from Ford to me. Maybe it'll fix this problem. I told him, I don't know. I think he might need some limiting straps because he's got a lot of down on this thing. I mean, I jacked this thing up and it it goes quite a ways. Um, that's the main thing I'm going to work on. He also wants me to uh, mess with the back end of this thing. He's cut a ton of metal out of this thing. <clears throat> like I said, the whole floor is gone. He's got some stuff he doesn't really like. His radiator's kind of mounted at a funny angle. He doesn't really like that. Um, apparently there's, I didn't know this rule because I don't have my, radi my radiator's stock location. But when you move them back here, you have to have some kind of cover in case it springs a leak, you don't get sprayed with hot coolant, which makes sense. So he put this on here, kind of scabbed it on there for now. Uh, this is gonna have to move because his shocks mount right there. Um, everybody that he's been talking to tells him they're at too much of an angle going back. So I'm gonna add a bar to this roll cage right about here, going across. Uh, I'm gonna cut that floor out the rest of the way, get the rest of the sheet metal out of the way for him. I'm probably actually gonna cut it all the way up in here, square it off because he's kind of got it just kind of hacked out of there to get it out of the way. I'll clean it up, make it look better. I'm gonna get rid of this. This is this rack here. I might have to do something with it. I don't know once I get into this a little further. Oh no. And then the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make, since you see there's nothing back here, I'm gonna make some kind of tire rack thing on here. So the spare tire kind of sits at an angle right here. Um, what it'll do, it'll give him some protection for his gas tank that's sitting right there. Uh, he gave me this fiberglass blanket. He was worried about welding around the gas tank and stuff, so he gave that to me. I don't have any of those. I've never really been too concerned about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to build some kind of tire rack thingy. Baja, I don't know. Something, something similar to my Jeep. I got, I put mine back here. I don't really want the extra weight of this tire, but... I put it back here because this thing lands nose heavy. I was trying to get some weight to the back, so I kind of built all this. Put this extra cage in here for my um, extra support, but it's kind of a tire rack. My tire just drops in there. I got this super sweet thing from my buddy. This is off like a super old tire machine. Like I said, I used to work at a tire shop, but my buddy had this. It's like off an old tire machine. It is freaking awesome. As soon as he saw that I built this thing, he's like, I have the perfect thing for you. And he brought it to a race one year because I kept losing this tire. This thing's super awesome because it actually has a bearing right here. It's off a it's like pretty old tire machine, I guess. But it's it's awesome. When you start tightening it down, that bearing allows you to just tighten that thing down. It's freaking sweet. I'm so glad my buddy gave it to me. Um, I used to have a ratchet strap that would come up over the top. I don't know how many times that ratchet strap broke and this tire went bouncing across the field. I, I did it at a monster truck show one time. Tire passed me at the finish line. I did it one time in Sun River. I lost the tire. So he got me that and that thing's freaking awesome. But yeah, same, same kind of style-ish is kind of what I'm going to build. It's going to be real close to that. Similar. All right, guys. I got something figured out. Well, no, my wife did. She had this battery pack. So now I can run my GoPro because it dies all the time. So went from extension cord to battery pack. So this should be a little better. <laughs> oh, I love my GoPro. So awesome. Anyways, we were talking about this. I called a, a really good buddy of mine that we race with all the time. He's one of the guys that like kind of got me into racing. Uh, he's a big Ford Bronco guy. He's got a bunch of them. Always, I, I actually went to high school with him. Uh, we weren't like real great friends in high school, but since we started racing, we've become really good friends. Like we hang out with him and his wife all the time. Uh, they're great people. Uh, but what I found out, Ford Bronco, when you start doing lift springs, this diameter of your coil gets smaller. That's why this is not fitting. So kind of like I originally said, I was gonna take this bolt out and I was gonna bend this thing up and drill a new hole and bolt it in. And he pretty much told me, you're right on. That's exactly what you need to do. Um, 
when you go to an aftermarket coil because they're it's just different technology especially because this thing's like a ifs i think they call an ifs or twin traction beam I, whatever that monstrosity is i don't know but that's what it is I, i've worked on this before i actually did some bracing on the brackets the drop brackets over there um the first time it was here but yeah that's what we're gonna do we're gonna unbolt this thing and i'm gonna put it in my vise i'm gonna beat the crap out of this thing and move it that way so it tightens down i'm still gonna put a block right here just to keep give them a little more reinsurement that this coil isn't going to pop out of this bucket i guess maybe without a lift and stuff it's not a problem but once you start lifting these things maybe it becomes an issue but yeah i'm hoping you guys can see the gap under that thing i mean i can see air through it it's pretty crazy so we're going to modify it yay nothing better than modifying stuff we're going to bfh this thing we're going to press it a little bfh it a little more <laughs> If anybody has an anvil out there they want to give me, I would sure appreciate it. <laughs> okay, flatten it out a little. I'm going to try to press it here, flatten it a little. Because this is actually, see how this is hooked? It actually almost needs to go straight, then curl around the coil. So I kind of got to get this flattened out a little bit. It's a real pain in the butt, dude. That's why I'm not a Ford Bronco guy. It's closer. Yeah. This is like threading a needle, dude. Ow. Maybe it'll go in this way now. Hey, look at that. I bent the hell out of it. So literally I just I made two marks right there and I got this I bought this from a guy at work and his dad passed away and had all this whole like machine shop in his house. I got this bender, his dad had made this thing. It's just kind of a Pretty much like a 90 degree press it works great for the little stuff that i do that i have to fold this is like i said it's central hydraulic so it's harbor freight version stuff but this thing that he made right here is pretty freaking sweet i, I use this thing all the time you can see i got some stacked up crap here to make this work but lining up my line there i'm just trying to form this just a little it's not much i'm gonna move it to the next line See how that thing's just kind of forming it. <clears throat> you can see that's where the original flat on this thing was. So I'm just kind of pressing right in there, trying to form it just a little bit. And then I'll probably have to open this back up a little bit because I'm trying to get this to form around the coil, but this has to be out further when I do that because it's, it's actually, it hooks here and then it rocks. So it's, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. I'll be back and forth on this kind of hammering. Pressing, hammer, pressing. Now it's time to punch a hole. Hey, look at that. Now there's not a gap. Now that coil ain't going anywhere. Hopefully. We'll see. I'm going to weld this in there. Once that's in there, I'll flex this thing out and make sure that coil don't go boing out the front like it was. Okay. 
more. Yeah. That tire is completely off the ground. Totally in there. Hey, look at that. We fixed Ted's problem. Oh, yeah. She ain't going nowhere. Bam! That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, snap. Crackle pop. Heck, yeah. Ah, I'll finish welding this out. Yeah. <laughs> Thought process, you hear my gears grinding? <laughs> the smoke wasn't from the weld job, it was coming out of his ears, he just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? You taught me well. Alright, I gotta send Tad a picture of this. Can't weld drop. All right, guys, uh, that's a wrap on the front coils. Uh, they seem to stay in there now. Uh, we just fully cycled it. The coil stayed right in there. You can see it, it bent in a C like that as that radius arm travels. It goes on an arc, so it gets shorter. It curves that coil, but the coils stay in the bucket now. The straps help, and then those little stops keep it from popping out. So it uh, looks like it's going to work really good. Um, that's the first part of this, this Bronco build. Um, we're going to do this next. See all this floor he's got, this his old radiator mount used to be there. That's all coming out. I think that square tube's coming out. He's got another set of these shocks. These are going in it. These Bill Steins. Uh, he has a set in there. Everybody tells him they're too steep. Uh, they're a lot shorter travel than these ones, so we're going to put these guys in. Uh, it's going to be a custom mount. i got to get all this floor out of here first to see what I have to work with. But I'm probably going to, they're probably going to go inside of the frame and come up here. I'm going to build some kind of bracket off here going that way. So uh, that'll be in the next series of this. Um, so if you guys want to see that, uh, like, su subscribe, look for notifications. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, okay. it's going to be interesting. We got that. Then, oh, yeah, we also got tire rack. We've got a spare tire he wants mounted here. So I'm going to run some tubes back. Build him some kind of Baja mount back here for his spare tire. He's running 31s on this thing. Uh, I think he used to have 33s on it, but I think he's got he's gonna run 31s this year. Anything else I forget? <laughs> Not that I know of. There's a lot of other stuff he wants me to do too. He's got some gussets and other stuff that he needs me to do, but this is what we're gonna focus on is getting the shocks because they got a test in tune day. So the front coils are dealt with, so now we can jump this thing safely. Well, it's safe if you can jump a vehicle, I guess. Um, these rear uh, shocks are going to be the next thing. Kind of get this uh, the butt into this thing to calm down a little bit. I think he, he said it might be bouncing just a hair. So hopefully these shocks take care of it. He got this those shocks from another guy we race with who got it off another guy that he races with. So, um, yeah, that floor is coming out next. I'm going to get the plaz out. I got all new tips. I think you guys saw in the other video I was struggling with my plaid, so I got new electrodes, new cups, so this should come right out of here real quick. I'm going to have to do something with this gas tank monstrosity thing going on here, so we'll be dealing with some stuff along the way.